everybody. So we are so excited. We are here to talk about another obscure animation. This is a foreign film that we're going to be talking about. It's going to be really fun. And I'm Rachel and my friend Stanford is here Hi. to talk animation. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for yeah. the invite. Oh, anytime, literally. So, okay, so this is gonna be really fun. We're talking about a movie called Louise by the Shore. I would pronounce it in French, but I do not have those skills. Likewise, yes. <laughs> and uh, yes, so this movie was released in France in 2013. Uh, it is uh, what it was released in the United States in 2016. So it you know sometimes takes a while, <laughs> yes, for for that to to be and it 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 got nominated for a European animated animation award actually two thousand seventeen, so <laughs> but it premiered yeah. at, at Annecy, uh, animation festival which is in Europe in two thousand sixteen. So uh, that's kind of the timeline here, and uh, this is a beautiful little animated film and so we're going to talk about it i'm really excited and uh it's directed by a man named uh jean francois leguin leguini leguin i don't know how to say Fa it. fabian i i don't know i don't know either i thought you were great <laughs> okay good. thanks sorry yeah. sorry john uh so yes and uh he has directed another movie called The Painting. Have you ever seen that? I know. No, I've... I haven't seen it. I was going to ask. I wanted to ask you. Have you seen it? I haven't. I've heard of it. Uh, I've, I feel like I've seen it on the G. I think on G Kids mm -hmm. on their website, but I haven't ever seen it. So it's something else to to see. So this is his second film, feature film, and I uh, we'll talk about it. But what was your overall response to this movie? Well, I. I really enjoyed it. It's it's a beautiful film. It's it really feels European, for lack of a better uh, 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 term. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't mean to classify it or, or or put judgment on it for that. But it just you know you just get a feel. Sometimes even like we see a live action film, instantly you see the first frame. You're like, oh, this film was made in Europe, you know. Yeah. And uh, so that it felt very European to me. I really thought. I was really timely to watch this because it's, it's a very much, I think an adult film. I mean, not like, you know, I mean, it's, it's for grownups and yeah. uh, you've probably been seeing some of the stuff on Twitter with, with Brad Bird. He's been you yeah. know, the director of the Incredibles, but there's been one, there's one, one particular thread that's been, I think quite interesting. Uh, one parent was calling him to task about the Incredibles and he was, they loved, he said that my, my child really, my four year old really loved, watching the Incredibles, but then you know, at home and then watching it at, in the theater, they were got impatient or whatever. And Brad's just like, well, number one, I'm not making the movie for kids. You know, this is not animation. Four -year -old, not, four -year -old, yeah. yeah, for a four year old. This is not a, a, a medium, you know, animation is not solely a medium for kids. It's, it's, right. it's a medium for film, for storytelling and regardless of the story. And so I was really happy about that because I just thought this is really a wonderful, Louise by the Shore was such a wonderful example of a beautifully done film that maybe a, kid, a, a, a child could watch, but I think you really have to be an adult to, yeah. to enjoy it and, and appreciate it. Well, and it's not in an offensive way at all. Like there's, no. really, there's nothing offensive in it. Uh, so it's not adult in that sense, yes, but, it, right. but it's just in, that. in pacing, in uh, themes, things like that. It's more of a mature uh, film yeah so. yeah exactly and yeah. uh i i just i i, I just thought it was a, a very beautifully done film one thing i've wondered about is why do you think that european animation which has been in my opinion so strong in the last five years as far as yeah. content has been so good things like uh, cartoon saloon with song of the sea secret oh. of the Hells. Yeah. uh you have like persepolis and uh and april in the extraordinary world you yes. have just these beautiful films and i'm just wondering why do you think that they have not caught on the way that anime has out of japan you know, that's a, that's a really good question. I've, I've wondered the same thing too. And I don't know if it's, if it's just the, the themes that they're, that they're choosing or 
again, if it's just uh, the artistic style, you know, I just, I, I'm with you. I don't know, because those films, all those films that you listed are tremendous films. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, is it, I wonder if it's just because Ghibli had the advantage of, you know, being distributed by Disney for a time. Because even uh, even the more comedic European films do not do well over here. Like right. Aardman don't do well over here. Yeah. Uh, the, um, I don't know, it's just something like a town called Panic or, or whatever. It's just like, for some reason, these films, no matter how good they are, just don't seem to be able to capture an audience. And like, something like Shaun the Sheep had a fairly wide release and it made nothing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm with you. And and those are and they're all delightful films. I love Shaun the Sheep. Oh. You know, I saw I saw it at Sundance, and it was ter- you know it was it was terrific. Oh, you did? You yeah, they sc- they they screened it at Sundance, which I thought was brilliant. And mm-hmm. but again, it made me sad that it didn't get a real following, you know, or uh, get an audience in the in the U- with the U.S. market. Um, yeah, yeah. I it's an interesting thing. I don't know. There's something I don't know. A lot of them aren't like super cute if that makes sense. Uh, I mean, some of the Ardman, Sean the Sheep is super cute, I guess, but like, I don't know, like something like Song of the Sea is more like soft and gentle. Yes. And, uh, but I, I have yet to meet a, a child, even with the deep themes of that movie, of Song of the Sea, that doesn't like that movie. I, mm-hmm. it is something that, I mean, I was talking to one of my friends and she said that her little girl will just watch it like over and over and over again. And I think it's kind of similar to, something like I loved uh, American Tale and now as a kid and uh, I now I watch them like in Land Before Time too both of those are very sad especially I watched Land Before Time uh, a while back for family movie night and I was like this movie is super kind of over the top like I like it uh-huh. but the narrations okay, little foot he didn't know where what he would do next and it's very over the top but I yeah. know there's something about i think children that really respond to that actually i think mm-hmm. it's kind of like um the um won't you be my neighbor when they're talking about fred rogers and how he was sort of soft and quiet and uh and but showed love and talked about like talked about these deeper themes to kids and I don't know. I mean, I remember as a kid watching, um, <laughs> it's not funny, but the, have you ever seen the Sesame Street Christmas Eve special? <laughs> I don't know if I have it's or not. It's so good. It's great. And you have Big Bird is so worried because Oscar tells him that Santa isn't going to be able to fit down the chimney. And so he's very upset. And, <laughs> and so like, I don't know, like I remember just watching it and be like, <gasps> oh no you know and, and uh <laughs> and also uh there's this whole like gift of the magi thing uh-huh. with like uh i get their names confused but let's see ernie is the short one right uh, i mean yes is and the tall one, the taller one okay. with the more so, yeah <laughs> so ernie all, all shaped head. ernie trades in uh his rubber ducky to buy a cigar box for Bert's oh. paperclip collection. <laughs> and Bert s- turns in his paperclip collection to buy a soap dish for Forever Ducky. Ducky. And it's very like, and then they sing um, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas at the end. Cause of course, I forget his name, but the uh, uh, Mr. Hooper, I think was his name, comes, yeah. it comes and brings them back and uh, brings back the stuff and it's very happy but like i i loved really like melodramatic oh, like so sad cute. stuff like that yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> even you look at the the classic disney films oh, uh, yeah. your pinocchio your pinocchio your baby, your, yeah. Yeah. yeah even snow white when like when grumpy is crying oh my gosh oh that's just devastating it you know? really is. yeah like, yeah no. uh yeah so uh the I don't know. There's something about these movies that, like, I think people maybe think there's no way that kids will like. I, I, I do agree with you. This one in particular is is probably still more for adults. But uh, just European films in general, I think there's something about the pacing and the and the themes that people yeah. think, oh, they're they're not for little kids. But I don't know. People might be surprised. <laughs> I think people might be surprised too. And yeah, yeah, and maybe too. It's it's the. Uh, I always feel like European films, both live action and, and, and these animated films too, 
they really they really talk about heavy parts of the human experience. Yeah. And anime does that as well, but somehow it's just packaged in a brighter way, you know, that I guess just people are just more more open to it possibly in the US. I am it's, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It is interesting. And so, yeah, and maybe partly it was also helped by the fact that anime was sort of more focused on one major studio, whereas it's a little more fragmented from Europe. But I really wish that uh, we could get these films in more eyeballs because they're really great. They're they're really good. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and I was glad to see, I was worried that the new changes for the Academy Awards and in voting for animated film would, would hurt, but even though I didn't really love Loving Vincent, I was glad to see that that still got nominated. And um, I don't remember, oh, there was another indie that got nominated. I can't think of it. But um, I was glad to the see bread, that. The breadwinner? Oh, yeah, 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 the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. I was glad to see that because I think that that has been the one way that people are finding out about these yes. European films is that they have gotten nominated for mm-hmm. Best Animated Feature Film. Mm-hmm. So that's really good. Anyway, so... Yeah, this movie I really, really like. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it is a bit of a slow burn. And, and I think you could make the argument that it might have been a little better as a short than a feature film. But I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, going on this journey with this, this woman and this character. And so yeah. we're going we're gonna to talk about it. So uh, Louise by the Shore, it's pretty simple, the premise. It's a, about this woman named Louise that is at this uh, island resort elderly elderly woman right well i don't know if they they ever say her age but she's well into her 70s probably right yeah and uh she uh, i liked they described it on i think it was on imdb they said it's an endearing and original take on the desert island genre yeah i like that too i saw that which i didn't even know that was a thing that was a genre (laughs) i know that's true but it it, it describes it well doesn't it because yeah yeah, it is it's kind of a desert island thing you know it is it is like castaway Castaway. and uh i don't know movies like that like high kind of stuff and uh so yeah a septuagenarian castaway so in her 70s right that's yeah so i guess 70s she is stranded in this seaside french town for the winter where she becomes her very own robinson crusoe and gets the most out of the desolate surroundings so basically what happens is there she's there uh, at this resort and uh she and it's a, it's a resort that people go and everyone leaves uh, yeah, after the summer and there's one final train and that's it you know yeah. I mean? It's just like, you know, it's not like anybody's <laughs> hanging out there in the off season. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. And so the movie is about her figuring out how she's going to survive until people come back. And uh, I, what I really like the most about this is I, I feel like it really grows organically. Her like going from kind of feeble and weak to begin with to being like this like strong woman and i know you really see this experience kind of re-energize her i think which is really fun yes agree that's that's a really fun part about this about this film yeah 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 and i also i mean i love the animation we'll talk more of that and i but i also love the sound design of this movie Mm -hmm. when even when she's like in the more town part of it always hear the ocean the yeah. entire time the entire time I, yeah which I was really impressive and it's, yeah yeah it's, i agree with you it's it's I, I love that and and it's very minimalist you know and in, in the sound because I mean, every every sound matters you know and but i'm with you that just the constant uh you know lull of the ocean is, is marvelous i just loved it mm-hmm. yeah yeah have you seen the red turtle yes and so this was reminding me a lot of the red turtle yeah. and I, I kept thinking about it in fact i kept waiting for this and maybe we'll probably maybe get more of this a little later i don't mean to jump the gun but no you're fine i kept wondering if this film was going to be again more of kind of an allegory or that like this woman has has actually died and we're just we're just seeing her yeah. kind of in this state of limbo and maybe that was an intentional decision by 
the filmmakers. I, but I, I think it's more, no, this is, this is real. She's, yeah. you know, she didn't die. She kept living. And, and uh, that's, I guess, part, part of the joy of the story. Yeah, I could have seen that too, especially once uh, it gets pretty surrealist yes. towards the end. I could have seen that as well. I mean, I think the red turtle is more, there's sort of more gravitas to the red turtle. Yeah. You know, with the opera and the, yeah. I love the red turtle so I did much. Too. It, was, it was a great film. But, uh, but it's just, it's just more of like a fairy tale, I would say. Than uh -huh. This is more like slice of life following this woman and i just i liked that she was kind of sassy and funny yes i did too yeah did she you was oh go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say she kind of reminded me a little bit of like not not particularly well she kind of reminded me of both of my grandmas in a way uh -huh. but particularly my mom's mom because i definitely think i mean now she's in her 90s but definitely in her 70s for sure if you had if this if this had happened to my grandma, she would have she would have been fine. She would have done exactly all these things, and she would have figured it out. And because she was just that kind of person, uh, and so a very she's a very low maintenance kind of gal, I think. And uh, she she would have been able to to get things done. Uh, I don't know. Did it remind you? Did she remind you of anybody in your life or anything like that? You no, know, not necessarily. Although I just feel like that she. But because partly because but my both of my grandparents both you know both sides died when I was quite young so I didn't really get yeah. get the chance to know them but I think one grandma in particular the stories I've heard I thought the same thing like my grandma would have been able to do that she was resourceful yeah. and strong and happy you know and 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 and, and totally would have done that so I think that was a real strength about how they created Louise because she really was a relatable character you liked her you know she wasn't just some mean old lady you know for not even close you know she in a way she seemed kind of quiet but then as 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 the film continued to to go just as you said you know she just became even more resourceful and and more strong and you know mm -hmm. she states that her aches her aches and pains left her mm -hmm. you know and she just yeah. was out doing her thing and you have to like this character in order to like the movie. And True. That's it. You know. <laughs> that's it. For most of it, we get a yeah. you know, little stuff happens later on. But I don't know. She's just she just seems like a really cool lady. And you know what she reminds me of a little bit is Agnes Varda. Did you ever see Faces Places? Uh I think I did see face. Oh, I love faces, places. That's a really interesting comparison. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think Agnes Varda, if she was on a, uh... <laughs> a desert island or <laughs> no, yeah. stuck on a beach. <laughs> yeah. She would make some kind of art installation, probably. Too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Agnes Varda, she's a character. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. What a. Yeah. Force I was, of nature, she is. Yeah, I was thinking about who I would want to if they were gonna make a live action version of this and maybe they should just cast agnes varda yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that would be perfect. That would but, be perfect. Uh, <laughs> but i was also thinking blythe danner would be oh, yeah. really great she's very good yeah, yeah. i think yeah, she good, would be, a good call yeah i think she would be funny mm -hmm. she would be sweet uh and i think she could she would she'd be my pick <laughs> yeah and yeah so uh, it was just, it was a really like, you know, it's just kind of empowering and fun and a different character than you typically see, you know, it's usually somebody young and like, you know, more Robinson Crusoe-ish. So this was cool. And uh, the animation, let's talk about that. Like it's, it's a watercolor animation and uh, they do go into some surrealist sequences in these dreams, but the, the basic animation for most of the movie, how did you feel? What did you think about it? Well, I thought uh, I thought it was effective, and, and again, really quite uh, beautiful to look at. Now, I had read somewhere that the uh, director painted all of the backgrounds himself. I don't I know. Think, I think I read that? that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then other people worked on the animation. I thought that the characters. Well, again, it's mostly Louise, but you know, but she sees she sees other you know people in in these kind of dream sequences or in these other sequences where 
you know, the other people coming in. But I, some of those, it reminded me of, of, of the work that uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios did with their short feast. You, you know, mm. with that, with the, the way that, because I think that they use 3D animation, but they made it look 2D, but the dog had, that dog had a lot of depth. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know if they how much 3D animation that they were using, but it just it all looked really cool. I thought I just I really liked the the style of it because uh, again the two is just such a delight to see the 2D animation at least at least in style. If mm -hmm. even if they're maybe using different tools. Yeah, to there it. were there were sometimes you could tell they're using the computer computer, but. I thought it flowed really nicely and just, uh, I don't know, it was just really, I mean, I love the ocean. So this movie already is going to be a, a win for me. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I just thought that all of the animation was really lovely. So these dreams, she has these dreams, sometimes daydreams, sometimes she's actually sleeping, mm -hmm. uh, that are, I felt were very surrealist, especially like Dolly inspired. There's like whole dream with clocks, which is very Dolly. Yeah. Uh, and I just wonder, what do you think of those sequences? Well, I, I, the couple that really stand out to me are the one where she's, she's walking down the boardwalk at night Mm -hmm. and all the lights start coming on in in the uh in the buildings and then the boardwalk yeah. is full of people and really they almost look like they're ghosts i mean they're done yeah. in kind of a translucent way so i wasn't sure again if that was a necessarily a memory or if it was like she was in some kind of spirit world where all these other people had died but they were there you know i i couldn't tell and again that's was that was some of it was fueling my Speculation. I wonder if she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, is she? But uh, well, there seemed to be one. There was definitely there were definitely characters from her life for sure. Yeah. There was some kind of uh, there was some kind of love that she kept uh, dreaming about that was somebody that I think she stole from another per, you know woman or there was some kind of conflict yeah. there some some torrid romance that yeah about and uh oh, love and, triangle thing yeah <laughs> and i loved the whole segment with christmas i thought that was so yeah. great I, that was really nicely done mm -hmm. too. yeah i agree and and especially because she's doing it early because she knows that people i guess the people are going to come back for christmas there's some people who come for christmas and uh so she wants to celebrate Christmas before any of the people come back. And I don't know. I just loved it. Almost. It kind of had a little bit of sort of like a la la land kind of floating kind of some, some uh -huh. of the more surrealistic sequences in that movie kind of reminded me a little bit of this. I mean, there's some really wacky sequences like the bird court. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, there's some more of the nightmare. what do you think of that? That was weird. Yeah. I mean, because nightmare-ish again. <laughs> Yeah, so again, thinking of oh, this, this is kind of again very European in style, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I just thought, well, okay, <laughs> 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 whatever, that'd be a nightmare. I know yeah. I'd be freaked out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> well, and you know, every time she encountered or she, she'd be having conversations with that uh paratrooper, the dead paratrooper, uh huh, was that. I mean, I, I, I just assumed that that was real, but she saw that skeleton there hanging with the, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the parachute. Skeleton. Or was that something that, was that also kind of a dream? What's, how, how did you interpret that? Um, did we ever see it like in the shelter or in no, the town? I don't, I don't remember. Was did that you, the guy that from the from the love affair? Maybe I maybe, I don't know. I was it was to me it was unclear, but again maybe yeah. I missed it, missed something. But I've got to ask Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does say that her love is named Pierre, and uh, that uh, yeah she, no she goes she finds the skeleton in the cave right oh uh, yeah it's, it's, she goes in that right. cave. Mm -hmm. I think the skeleton was real. I I don't know. It, it might not be though. Uh, or I was wondering if it was just like <laughs> it, it kind of reminded me of of the role that Wilson played in Castaway. Yeah. You know, the the yeah. right the the it was a volleyball, wasn't it? And for Wilson, yeah. you know, that he drew the face on. Uh, 
in that even though the skeleton actually talked, right? Even his mouth wouldn't move. But uh, didn't we? But she was having conversations with him, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and multiple conversations. You mm-hmm. see him a couple times. Yeah. And uh, I I wonder if he was maybe 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 he was Pierre. I don't know. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I'm not sure, but but i i'm okay with that like i don't need to know everything like it's part of yeah, art like it didn't yeah i didn't it didn't bother me either i i, yeah. I just was wondering though again what kind of state was she in when she was having those conversations you know was, yeah. it, was she having a dream well or... she also starts talking to the dog yeah and so the dog her... talks back oh yeah yeah depends <laughs> to the talk so there's definitely some breaks with reality but i really liked some of her i liked the script in some of these sections when she's talking I, she says at one point she says do you think a person can be punished for forgetting half of their life yeah which i thought was really a kind of a beautiful thought i really liked that she said that uh uh, that happy people have no need to tell the story of their lives therefore they don't need a memory which is kind of interesting i don't yeah, know if i, I agree thought, but it's it's interesting no i don't it's interesting i agree and, and that's the stuff that i was kind of talking about uh at the beginning rachel and that i think that you've got to i think it takes someone that has some experience as an adult to appreciate to appreciate some of these themes in this movie not that you can't right you know enjoy enjoy it if you're younger but i think that because it's really i think it's a treatise on getting older yeah you know and 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 aging and the different things that happen to you when when you're coming to the end of your life yeah, yeah. well and it is weird to me how in life you remember the hard stuff so much and the pain so so much more than the happy times which is so weird to me i mean i i look back and you know you think of like the the vacations that we took and i do remember some of them but but man i remember that time i was bullied in fifth grade like clear as like if it was a movie like in it, my head yeah like it happened yesterday right? <laughs> you're like why yeah. don't i remember going to disneyland like in the same clarity in the same yeah um it's a weird thing how the human brain works and i think that's kind of what they're getting at here with this i do too yeah you know that that it's the 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 happiness the happiness is kind of more if you think about it most of the happiness in our life are kind of the same like we have you know, we're all happy at Christmas. We're all happy at birthdays. We're all happy at, well, happy, you know what I mean? And like, as opposed to, I feel like our trials are sort of more unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, you know, like everybody gets married in every culture. That's a happy thing. Like, uh, there's just sort of, there's sort of the same. And, uh, whereas like every divorce is different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. I, I also loved seeing her like in, sort of establish this routine. And I, I thought it was, you know, it's interesting when she gets when she leaves the house. Like I was so surprised when she does that at the beginning. Yeah. And she's just like picking up these. Uh she's making her own shelter and yeah. she, she just makes this little, yeah. this little <laughs> cabin kind of thing on the beach, right on the beach. Yeah. 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 And I love the beach. So like that. Uh, I, I can't, we, we yeah, I can relate. I mean, it's such a, what a more pleasant place to live than in this house. It's like a block away, right yeah. from the from the <laughs> beach, and there you just write on it. And clearly, she loves it too. My my friends and I when we, when we went to Hawaii, we started to joke that there was a like a, a you know that the uh, the monkey turning into a man thing, like drawing with yes. the different phases. Well, we would joke that there was the phase of the beach bum. <laughs> You know, like it started as like a normal person and then like, you know, you end up with this yeah. huge beard and whatever. Evolve like, into this. <laughs> or like, oh, they're only on phase three. <laughs> yeah. That's a so, good point. Yeah. And she, she says that, I like, she says, when I built my shack, I surprised myself. I wasn't as clumsy as I thought I was. My body remembers stuff that I myself had forgotten. 
and that, that's that's so true like i learned how to really swim in high school and like everybody you know goes to pool and whatever but like really like doing the strokes correctly and everything i learned how to do that in high school and i think that there is something to the fact of like once that's in your body it yeah. never goes away like Muscle i memory is, is real yeah yeah like i went a long time without really swimming swimming and you know as soon as i got back in the water it was you know it's there it's in my body yeah yeah, yeah. which is really interesting and I love seeing her like gain more confidence. And she says, I seem to be in better health than I was in the city. And, and says she daydreams and she loves to go to the town. She says just for old time's sake. And so that's when she goes to sort of remember Pierre. Mm -hmm. I remember really nice. And says at night I sleep like a baby. (laughs) Right. And you know, she's got this, I mean, she's got to take care of herself, but in a way it's this, it's this worry-free life, you know, mm-hmm. which is really great because it's so instead of, instead of trying to fight it, she just like welcomes it. Yeah. And, you know, she's, she's figured out how to fish and cook, you know, out there in her little, her, I'm calling it her cabin. I don't know, you know, her yeah. little deep cottage or whatever. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, just, and she's, yeah, that routine that she establishes, Every day, you know, they talk, they show that and how long she walks and the different things. And it's, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. You know, it's like she's having this life that's isolated from kind of the hustle and bustle of the city and that she can just kind of clear her mind and be calm. Like what happens when you go on vacation, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they yeah. think also like there's something about when you like necessity is the means of invention Mm -hmm. you know that uh, that when she's being told that she's an old person then you're like i don't know there's a certain part of your psyche i think that says okay i'm an old person i'm gonna behave like an old person but when like this is necessity she's either gonna die or she's gonna figure it out and like you figure it out it's really Mm -hmm. interesting thing i think that happens and I don't know. I just think of different parts of my life where I've been in new situations or I've had to, and it is interesting how quickly sort of mentally you adjust to that. Like, I, I don't know. I think about like, even on my mission, when we get, we'd go to a, a new place or just Indiana, but like sometimes it could feel very different. <laughs> and yeah. you know, it's just like how quickly your, your brain kind of assimilates to these new people, these new environments, even a new way of talking, a new way of cooking food, all that stuff. It's, it's just like kind of becomes part of who you are. Yeah. Is, is really, really interesting. And kind of makes you think that like, I don't know, like, do we kind of just accept things or are we like, I don't know, are we kind of challenging? Cause I, I am, I mean, I used to be, somebody was really challenging myself with open water swimming. And then I kind of, uh, kind of haven't been doing as much of that, but I, I do miss that kind of feeling like, wow, there's something really hard that I'm trying to tackle in my life. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. The, it's, it's an interesting dynamic that you see her becoming this new person as an older person, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really good. And, and also, yeah, like, like we said, sort of remembering the past too in, uh, in this kind of dreamy surrealist you know she literally dreams of clocks like that's mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that yeah. we have and uh yeah i mean uh, how do you feel about sort of surrealist segments in animated films it was certainly a big part of the golden age of disney with your dumbo and your even winnie the pooh with the you know yeah. the half a lumps of half weasels, weasels. Yeah. Uh, and the package films have a number of very dolly inspired sequences yeah uh the um i don't know there was definitely a big influence on those early animators and i don't know do you like that kind of thing or is it too like jarring for you you know i i typically like it just because i just the more the more artistic stuff that you can get put into a film that doesn't that doesn't seem necessarily misplaced Mm-hmm. I love it. And I thought in this yeah. film, everything worked because again, the whole thing kind of feels dreamlike anyway. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I thought that the, the artist, the, the, those 
sequences were all done with some real panache and 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 and, and style, and so mm-hmm. so they worked. I think if they maybe had been done kind of in a way that they were, they looked cheap or out of place or something, I might not have enjoyed it. But I I, I thought the animation was. In mm-hmm. fact, the animation almost got taken up a notch, I think, in some of those sequences, too. Yeah. I mean, Alice in Wonderland is certainly another one that has a lot of surrealism in it. Uh, and even, I, I think, for all its flaws, I think one of the things I liked in, uh, in, in um, uh, The Good Dinosaur was the sort of surrealist scene where they're, like, get, getting all drugged out and whatever. Yeah. I like that kind of thing. I don't know. It's just sort of, you can feel the animators really speaking. <laughs> Yes. In those sequences which i like and i can see how not to sound all snooty or whatever but like when you when you just watch a couple animated films a year i think something like that can maybe feel a little like oh yeah like, but, but like i think as somebody who watches a lot when something feels different and fresh and new it can be really exciting yes yeah. absolutely and this to me really added to my enjoyment of the, of the film yeah, i think so too definitely so uh yeah i think we pretty much talked about all this movie yeah can we talk a little bit about pepper uh oh yeah pepper the dog dog well i know we had we, we had mentioned earlier but i thought that the sequences were pepper were really interesting because pepper initially becomes like this talking dog yeah and and uh it's a stray that somehow they, they find each other and then once pepper finds her she, they you know they stay together uh and then pepper then pepper does leave for a bit and pepper also loses the ability to speak and i didn't quite know what was going on with that did you have any interpretation or how did you did you was there some other was there some deeper thing going on that i was missing? I don't know <laughs> it's true yeah uh, he it's did. an interesting choice maybe it's kind of like um uh, the cat and Kiki, or something like that. You yeah. Know, that, like it was just needed for this period to for them from the talk, or yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. But then Pepper too, you know, fills fills a, a very important role because it appears that re, re, truly, and I don't know what's going on with Louise. It's almost like she's going to end her life, right? And yeah. Pepper and Pepper pulls her out of the surf say and saves her yeah do you think that that again was that symbolic or do you think that was really happening how did you interpret how did you interpret that well isn't it the beginning she that's the year a year later that she's back at the and then she's telling us about what happened right well, possibly i thought it was just happening near kind of near the in the act three in the beginning the maybe maybe so I forgot. But anyway um but yeah it, it is possible that uh, that that I could see that that is true, and that's something I thought about. Is that is this kind of a an afterlife kind of situation that we have yeah. here? And I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, don't know. I, I thought it was cool. I mean, I was glad that Pepper saved her because mm-hmm. I didn't well, you know, I didn't want her to die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but that whole thing almost seemed again like it was it was surreal. And again, I didn't know if it was if it was a symbolic thing or if it was something that was uh the director did say that pepper was reminiscent of the old man and his dog in uh the movie my dog tulip okay and uh so i guess he wanted to make something that was similar they said wanted a charming film should resonate with a similar audience and he says that um uh, that he they said the the slow burn short feature is not exactly Easy fodder for cartoon lovers, but could please viewers who want more out of an animated animation film than just action-packed gags. So, and that's a, I think that's actually a critic who said that Jordan Mincer of the Hollywood Reporter said that. So, uh, and it's directed with hand-drawn affection, uh, and I think that that is very true. That I love in movies when you can feel that the director has a real affection for their character. Yes. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that the other day with this filmmaker named uh, Korida, uh, who is a Japanese filmmaker, 
who uh, is, it's really exciting. His new movie, Shoplifters, is getting huge buzz out of cans, which I'm very excited about. But his movies are also kind of a slow burn like this, kind of slice of life, following people. And his movies has have such an affection for the characters. Just... Mm -hmm beautiful and he has a wonderful movie about the afterlife literally called afterlife that's so great oh yeah i, I haven't seen that but I've, yeah. I've, I've read about it yeah so great and yeah i kind of wondered if this especially when it starts getting really surrealist with the birds or bird court and stuff like that if, uh -huh. if it was an afterlife but i don't know i couldn't decide yeah <laughs> i could decide it's hard to, it's hard, hard to know but uh still it's uh it's really ultimately i just thought it was a very moving film yeah. you know it was very satisfying uh film film to watch i thought yeah i really did too i i, I think that they are smart in keeping it not too long you know to 75 yes. minutes i think uh, perfect it, length yeah that i i think that terrence malick tries to do a lot of this and i i'm kind of a a Terrence Malick apologist because I, I appreciate that he, <laughs> I appreciate that he goes for it and that he's trying to put out art you know yeah but I get like his movies are too long and they are definitely self-indulgent for sure but I I feel like in comparison something like this uh and something like I really appreciated the fact that Ghost Story was just like 90 minutes you know you're just like in and out and uh, I I think that when you have these sort of these really existential <laughs> type movies uh that make you think and are just sort of about you're following a character around that you know just don't have a ton of story i think they're really smart when they reign in the the time oh agreed yeah yeah i wasn't a big fan of swiss army man what do you think of that one you know not not my favorite yeah yeah i yeah. get why people loved it sure I don't know. It was just a little repetitive to me. I felt like I kept making the same point yeah. over and over oh. and over again. I also felt the same way about the lobster, which is also kind of surrealist, but like, I just felt like it made its point and then made it again and again and again. I'm like, I get it. You know, yeah. people are lonely. I get it. I, yeah. you know, no, and, I and, and, and I just, I just didn't really like the sense of humor in both of those. So that's just a personal taste. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're never going to please everybody with these kind of experimental films and that's what makes them experimental. Right. So and this one has had the, just the good judgment of, of keeping it brief and not hitting us over the head with any kind of a message. Yeah. yeah. We got to figure stuff out and, and try to interpret it as you know, as we've been doing, try to interpret yeah. things that might not have really a clear interpretation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so but that you know that's what makes it interesting to 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 you know watch and talk about and, and right yeah so hopefully you you were able to see it on itunes correct yeah i was able to rent it on itunes and yeah. i think that's the only place you can yeah. stream it's right the only now. place that i could find it i, did, I couldn't find it yeah any any yeah. any other place i purchased it as a dvd on amazon and i think it was only like eight dollars so it was pretty cheap and uh, so that I th those are pretty much the two ways to watch this one. But it's definitely worth checking out, I think, if you're an animation fan or if you just like movies with the water or the ocean. It's a, it's a real beautiful, beautiful, sweet little movie, I think. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it has some funny parts, too. Yeah, I was just to say, the, tone, the, tone, the pacing's really nice in it. Mm -hmm. I never felt, once, you know, it gets very surreal and weird. But then it comes back with something kind of light and funny mm -hmm. or something kind of realistic and something thought provoking and something heartwarming. You know? yeah. <laughs> Cause she could be really funny and just sort of her sarcasm and, and talking with the dog and, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, there was just, yeah. So it's not one of those hoity toity, like, ooh, you know, kind of movies. Uh, it's, um, it has, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. I don't think even though yeah. it's an art piece. So mm -hmm uh so there yeah so there you go yeah it's a it's a good one uh, louise by the shore check it out uh if any of you do let us know what you think we'd be really curious to hear uh, and uh and yeah and let us know if you've seen the painting also by the same uh director we'd love to hear on that and we'll have to you know, we'll have to give that one a watch and yeah yeah so 
Uh, let us know if you have any suggestions for obscure animation. We try to do ones we think underrated, uh, obscure kind of uh, animated films that we want to give a shout out to. So let us know if you have any suggestions and that uh, you can see in the playlist all the different films that we've covered on obscure animation, whether in podcast or in you know video, uh, and check those out. And uh, Stanford, where can people find you? Well, I'm on Twitter at Stanford Clark, and I have a movie blog, which is moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And you can also find us, we talk Disney also once a month, so it's pretty pretty fun. And this month, we are going to be talking about Home on the Range, which is Home be on the weird. Range. Because uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, a draw out of the hat. I know. It's I'm glad we're just getting it over with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be yeah, watching it compared to something like we just saw, you know, <laughs> yeah, <right>. with Louise <laughs> by the shore. <laughs> They're not really on the same level. No, not that. even. <laughs> so we will have fun talking about it though and uh yeah you make sure you're following uh the podcast here at uh rachel's reviews on itunes and on youtube and uh, you can follow me at smiling lds scroll on social media i'd love to hear from you and hear what you think of this movie and yeah that would be great and uh we will uh, talk to you later Thanks, bye